I'm Re from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel and my very first what we eat in a week video. This video I'm going to be sharing with you a week's worth of meal ideas and how we kind of make them work for our large family of six. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday at 7pm. Now let's get on with having a look at what we eat in a week. It is Monday and we are having fish cakes. So we've got a variety of fish cakes to try. We've got these cod fish cakes and then these salmon fish cakes, which are both Tesco's own fish cakes. And then we've got these hearty food co fish cakes as well to try. And to go with that, we do like a little bit of sweet chili dipping sauce to go with fish cakes. It really gives it a bit of oomph. And peas, frozen peas, and then some new potatoes. Now, the children won't necessarily eat the fish cakes, the girls anyway, so I have got these battered chicken dippers as a little bit of a backup. And then on the side of our meals, I do like to have a little bit of salad. So we've got some spinach, some carrot battens, some cucumber, and then pepper, and some tomatoes to chop up. And now, I have been doing the salad in the middle of the table lately. I've always had salad on my own plate. But what I found is since I've been putting it in the middle of the table, instead of just on my plate, the children are more like to pick at it. So just popping the fish cakes into the oven so I can prepare the other bits and pieces and the backup chicken dippers just in case as well. Boiling the kettle and grabbing out some pans. If you haven't seen my kitchen organization tour, do make sure to check that out. So you can have a little nose around our kitchen, see how we organize our cupboards. Now we come to chopping up some potatoes. I will link this knife set below because I do get asked about it a lot. I'm just chopping up some new potatoes to boil in the pan. I don't actually add salt to the new potatoes in the pan. I think that's a habit from when the children were baby leg weaning. I'd rather add it on the table. Now it's time to rinse off some spinach. I do hate washing spinach. I should probably get one of those salad spinner things. And clip up the remaining spinach with a clip bag thingy to go into the fridge. I'm just chopping the pepper into little strips to go into the salad bowl because if it doesn't get eaten today it can go back in the fridge and be kind of eaten with a bit of hummus or dip or something as a little snack if you like to snack on things like that. Chopping a bit of, bit of tomato and now drying off the spinach leaves. What a pain having to dry those off one of my least favorite jobs and then adding all the salad in so that's the bowl it's not very you know artistic or anything but that goes on the table like that with some carrot battens and then the, the everyone can add a bit of that to their plates now to boil up some peas i sometimes do peas in the microwave but doing them on the hob today boiling the potatoes as well now i'm just grabbing our squash jug or our fridge jug whatever you want to call it which goes onto the table we have two of these it keeps the squash really nice and cold and it's just a really easy way to keep everyone hydrated at meal times. So now what are we up to? Strawberries. And they say Zara on them, just like my youngest daughter. So <laughs> didn't do that on purpose. They showed up with the Tesco order. But Zara strawberries, haven't had those before, quite chuffed with them. I'm just chopping these up for after the meal as a little dessert. But while I am kind of waiting for everything to finish cooking and everything's bubbling away, now seems as good a time as any to chop up the strawberries ready for that dessert. I'm cutting up the girls' chicken dippers with some scissors that I only use for food prep. And that's just a much quicker way of cutting up lots of kiddie food at once. And then I'm putting the chicken dippers onto the girls' plates and then I'm gonna encourage them to try a little bit of fish cake off my plate. Top tip for best eaters, you're far more likely to get them to try something new so they're comfortable with what's on their plate and you encourage them to add one new thing on than if you kind of present them with stuff that is all brand new and it's been It's especially true if you've got a child with autism, of which I have two. So that's my husband adding a bit of butter to his potatoes. He's the only one that likes butter on his potatoes. Everyone else would rather go without. Grabbing the fish cakes out, adding those to the plates, and then all of that is ready to go onto the table, including the salad, which everyone can help themselves for a little bit. And everyone is tucking in nicely. And I'm enjoying mine with that little bit of sweet chili sauce. These fish cakes are very nice, actually. I would recommend them and now it's time for some desserts the boys the big boys are having muller corners and the little ones are having fromage fray as you know if you've watched my grocery hauls i don't like yogurt so i'm not having any of that i'm just having some strawberries in fact everyone's having strawberries but i'm just having strawberries on to tuesday and we are having penne arabiata now i'm aware 
This is not penne pasta, it's twisty pasta, whatever that may be called, but it seems to be what it's called on menus and things places like that's why I'm going to it as. So we've got two tins of chopped tomatoes, we've got some basil, we've got some uh, lazy chilies and lazy garlic, or the little version of, and we've got some onions and all that's kind of going in for the sauce and then I've got some chicken for some family members, prawns for some other family members and then some green pesto for some pesto, pesto, pasta and peas for the family members as in the other ones are less likely to eat the arabiata sauce. Now I am doing my own version of this I think when you go to kind of restaurants and things and you have this dish, it doesn't, it's not necessarily like sort of heavy full of onions or anything, and I am adding lots of those bits in. And it's just, I know chef, don't get me wrong. I know like um, master chef. Um, I do my best to kind of feed my family kind of a variety of, you know, meals, especially trying to include sort of fruit and vegetables and things. But equally, I'm realistic. Um, my children especially, uh, one of them used to be incredibly fussy. So if I can get my family to eat a similar meal to each other, so I don't have to cook massive wild varieties of things every night, then I think I'm onto a winner. So we're adding a little bit of the garlic into the wok, a little bit of the chilies. I've already got the chicken in the oven, as you saw me do earlier, uh, just to kind of get that going, because it's going to be sort of chicken going with different flavors of things. Uh, if that makes sense, I'll show you in a second. Now, grating some cheese in the cheese grater box, which I love. This is so easy, just grate the cheese into it. And then, ta-da, it's got the lid. You can either put it back in the fridge or on the table, like I'm going to do now. And then people can have that themselves. Now, normally when I do pesto, pesto, pasta and peas, I can't even speak, um, I would use this and just put the pasta and the peas in there and bung that in the microwave covered with boiling water for 12 minutes and um, then I would do that as a really like quick swimming night tea or whatever for the children but I'm not using that today because I'm kind of cooking on the hob anyway I'm just going to do all the pasta on the hob but I just thought I'd share that that's how I normally do it. So pasta as I said is going on the hob so we're going to actually fry some of the prawns I know they're already cooked but I just want to heat them up because we've got the arabiata, which is like just a spicy pasta sauce, basically. Some are having the chicken, some are having that with prawns, and then the little ones are just having the pesto with the pasta. So this is the chicken I'm cutting up for girls again. I do cut up their food with these scissors, partly so that it cools, because they're less likely to be careful with burning their mouths and things, and partly just so I don't have to cut their food up from the table, because uh, Zara's three and Bella's five. And while Bella can mostly cut up her own food, it's still a bit of a, a chore and a bit of a stumbling block. So most of her food I do just chop up out of ease before I give it to her. So we've got spicy chicken pasta, basically. Spicy corn pasta, or it's going to have pasta in it. And then this pasta that is being drained, we're going to split. So some of it is going to go in oh, peas first, actually. Peas, let's drain peas. Uh, so, some of the pasta is going in there, and then we're going to just add the pesto to it. Um, this is such a quick and easy tea. If you just put the pesto and the pasta and peas in there with a bit of grated cheese, that's going to be really well. But tonight we are having these different variety meals, mainly because my husband isn't fussed on the pesto. I would eat that. So we've got the three different dishes there, which are being dished out for various family members. So I know the girls are very unlikely to eat the spicy version. So I'm not putting it on their plates, whereas everyone else is having like a little bit of each. So different family members having different options. But this is sort of one way of making a variety of different things and accommodating everybody. Um, but then the girls have got these little bowls to, to try. So we've got salad and we've got everyone's different variety of pasta. And then a little bit of grated cheese on the table. I did make too much of the spicy sauce on purpose, so I have portioned some of this up. That's going to go in the freezer for a quick tea or a quick lunch or whatever it may be for another night. It's always good to do that. It hasn't really cost me any extra time. And then we've got raspberries for tea for dessert, and then the little ones are having raspberry from our tray. And my husband and teenager are having yogurts as well. On to Wednesday, it's midweek tea time. And today we are having chips. I do love these oven chips. They're really, really yummy and they come out nicely every time. 
then my husband and I are having steak. We have, do like a little bit of steak. Children aren't as best on it, so they've got a slightly different variation. So we're having steak with peppercorn sauce and peas. Now, normally I would just do peas with it for the children as well. They're having beef burgers. They do like peas, as you know, they had them last night. Um, now, Zara is unlikely to eat an actual beef burger, so I'm doing these as a backup. Um, and because between them, they will eat six burgers. Um, they go in these rolls. But I'm going to try and feed her the beef burger first. They had peas last night, so they are having beans tonight. Bella especially loves baked beans, just adores them. So, chips going into the oven, just spreading those on two trays. So, we'll have a whole bag, we'll do the six of us. And then getting the burgers out. So, I'm going to attempt to feed Zara a beef burger and hide the chicken burgers. And if she won't eat the beef burger, I will offer her the chicken burger and my teenager will eat at least another one whole burger and the little ones between them will eat at least another half burger of some description. So clipping away the rest of the rolls we don't need and then on to the hob. I am loving this uh, flat induction hob since we have it in the new kitchen. Honestly it's just so easy to clean. Now this is me investigating the Pyrex jug. Let me know if you have to do this as well because all of the numbers have totally faded off the side. Do your Pyrex jugs do that to you? Do you end up just having to kind of hold it up to the light to look for where numbers once existed because that's at the stage I'm at with my Pyrex. Does that mean I need new ones or maybe a permanent marker pen or something? I don't know but I was trying to find 200 mil and it took me ages. Drying off the spinach again for the salad, popping in some cucumber so that can be bunged on the table. And then doing the peas, like I said, sometimes we deal them in the microwave, but um, we're doing them on the hob today. And then chopping up some apple for after dinner for some dessert. And may as well do this now while I've got everything out. So we've got baked beans for the children, peas for us, peppercorn sauce for us adults, and steak for the adults. And then in here we've got the chips and the burgers. So let's get everything dished up. Burgers for the children and the chicken burgers, which are my kind of, I'll pull those out when they have eaten or not eaten, but they'll have, they will sort of, they will not go to waste, they won't go to waste at all. But I didn't want to bring them out until they've at least attempted the beef burgers. I mean, the three of them love beef burgers. Zara's just a bit iffy on them. So I'm trying to sell it to her as a big flat sausage and maybe she'll eat it. But if not, she can have the chicken. Uh, which we'll just leave those over there for now, shall we? We'll leave those out of the way. So, draining off the peas for us, and then grabbing out the chips for us as well. Um, as we're having a slightly different meal, I've actually given the children their food first, and I'm dishing up the steak for myself and my husband. At least the food, children's food could be cooling. And there we go, steak, yummy, yummy. Now, I can't cope with steak without peppercorn sauce, and I like a lot of it, and obviously it makes it a lot more fatty, but it's just so good, so, so good. Let me know if you have steak, have you got to have a particular sauce with it? And if so, which? And now for dessert, we've got more yogurts for everyone bar me, surprise, surprise, and some apple. On to Thursday, and we are having homemade pizzas. Now this is the first time I've made them this way with wraps as bases, but we're gonna give it a go. I've got a can of pizza sauce, and if that's not enough to go around all of us, we've also got some chopped tomatoes, which we'll do as a backup. We've got pineapple slices, some cooked ham, some mozzarella and cheddar, it's like two different cheeses, as well as some salad bits to go on top too. Now, gonna heat up the oven. Once I've inserted my pizza thingy, which just creates more shelves in your oven, it's a genius little gadget, I'll link it below. So I'm going to start by chopping up all the toppings so they are ready to add on. My husband's feedback after these pizzas, by the way, because he is a bit of a... He doesn't like pizzas much, and if he only really likes them, they've got really thin bases. So I was expecting him to sort of whinge about these, if I'm honest, because they're pizzas and he's not that fast. But he really liked them. His only objection was I didn't chop up the ingredients finely enough. So do you know what, next time he can chop up the ingredients and that's fine. Anyway, we're just literally plonking some pizza sauce onto the wrap and then adding the toppings. And the children are having a go at doing their own and then we're just bunging them in the oven. So they've all had a little bit of a turn adding on their own things. 
you probably noticed I just cut up the mozzarella. I didn't attempt to grate it because it's a bit of a pain in the bum. I probably could have chopped it up a bit finer, but it worked fine chopped. And to be honest, these pizzas came out great. This meal was such a hit with my family. Now I do know that pineapple pe on pizza is a bit controversial. <laughs> you know this from my last grocery haul, but some people think it's great. Some people think it's the devil's food. I never knew that pineapple on pizza would really spark such debate, but do let me know. Do you like pineapple on pizza or is it in fact the devil's food? I really, really would value your opinion on this and I am amazed at how divisive this issue is. This was probably the favorite meal of the week with my family. Now it's time for dessert and they are having some banana before their yogurts. I do not like banana. No, I actually think banana is the devil's food. But I don't share this fact with my children because otherwise they would need to either. On to Friday, and Friday is curry day this week. So we've got some chicken breast fillet, some onion, and then we've just got Sharwood's jar of tikka, korma, and madras. We used to have a takeaway on a Friday, and instead we're doing easy peasy jars because, you know, it's lockdown. We're trying not to have any contact with the outside world where we can get away with it. So we've just got some rice, some chips, and some naan. I'm doing my own version of an easy peasy takeaway, I'm still doing the salad bits on the side just to add a little bit of little bit health into the curry. So chopping up the salad first. Um, I only chop this up first because I'm doing the chicken and then I can use the same board to do the chicken on afterwards whereas if I chop the chicken first and then did the salad then obviously I wouldn't be able to use the same board would I'd have to kind of because of chicken contamination. It's always, I'm always a little bit paranoid about chicken contamination actually for that very reason because let's face it, we don't want to be getting ill any time, especially not now. So we've got the chips are going into the oven, just whacking a bit of the chicken around the pan, around the wok, and the onions, I'm doing that separately, and we're releasing off the spinach. And now we're gonna use the little rice cooker steamer thing, which is my one of my favorite gadgets as well. It's slightly different from the one I do pasta in. Literally just plonk it in. I'm not sure if this is exactly how you're supposed to use it, read the instructions, but I cover it in boiling water and bang it in the microwave for 12 minutes. By the way, this is a microwave and an oven, so you can use it as either or, which is, I haven't explained that very well through this video, but because sometimes I use it as a microwave, sometimes I use it as an oven. But at the moment it's being used as a microwave. So I'm doing a little bit of each of the sauces in each of the pans. I've just split the chicken and the onions between each of them. I found this is the easiest way to do sort of different sauces. And it does make it nice to have a little bit of variety. Like the, uh, that one's the korma. No, it's not. That one's the tikka. That one's the madras. And this one's the korma. So the girls will only eat korma. Um, William will eat two varieties. I'll eat two varieties. Oh, I would eat all three. But oh, by the way, fry, yay, my t shirt. <laughs> anyway, oh, steaming up the camera, put the bottom and on bread in. What was I even saying? I think I'm losing the pot now. It's probably because it's Friday and it is the end of the week. Anyway, salad ready for the table, and now it's time to dish out some food. Everybody has a bit of rice, plonk all that on the plates. And then everyone has some chips and then it comes to the curries which sometimes I just bang in the middle of the table but I'm dishing up today and then we'll just add for extras but everyone has different combinations then we've got the naans which is steaming up my lens again I just chop these these naan breads are amazing I buy these from Morrison's I chop these up into strips ready to put on the table we do cook them for longer than it says to do on the packet it makes them a little bit crispier uh, but they're fab and that is the curry which went down very very well almost as well as the pizzas and then for dessert for friday they got some jaffa cakes as you can see from their little faces they absolutely love jaffa cakes thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a huge thumbs up do not forget to subscribe hit that bell to be notified when i post new videos every tuesday thursday and sunday at 7 pm want to catch my latest video it's just here and another video i think you may enjoy from my channel is just down here see you guys soon